One of our favorite things to do when we travel, whether it's here in the United States or abroad, is finding junk and flea markets and thrifting and all that that entails. Follow along with us today while we share our the ins, outs, do's and don'ts of French flea market, brocant, and secondhand shopping in France. Our adventure started out in Montmorillon. Hopefully I said that right. Yeah, it'll be all right. We'll, we'll write it down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a brocant shop. I don't think we even took any pictures. The prices were way too expensive. The next day we were looking to go somewhere else. Our tour guide took us to a place that had her items in it. We wound up picking up some enamelware. The prices were high and I'm pretty sure that she bought the stuff and then marked it up and then took us there. After that, we were a little bit disappointed. Even though I did get some amazing finds, we're gonna share those pictures with you. Um, we wanted to take matters into our own hands and we did a little research. Yeah, so Debbie got the whole group together and she's like, listen, we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. We've got this little flea market that we're going to tomorrow and then I want to go back to Paris. So we switched up our plans because we were going to stay out there, what, four days? Yeah, and this was not the flea market originally planned. This was like a Grenier, which is like a, um, a French yard sale. Grenier yeah. is a, a attic sale. And I had actually messaged my friend Andrea, who goes to France all the time, and I was like, um, we need to find some better shopping. Like this is what we're here for and we're not finding things we're looking for. And she said to search Grenier. And when we talked to our tour guide and mentioned it, then she found this place. But then even when we got to the town, she was like- We had uh, to stop and ask for directions. Yeah, she didn't really help us find it. Once we got to city center, we still couldn't find exactly where we needed to go. And Kathy, who was in the other van from the White Swan, we'll drop her link below, she's awesome, did some questioning and found out where it is that we needed to go. But once we got there, we had like 15 minutes to shop. Yeah, because we were trying to get to Monet's garden and we had like an hour and a half drive to get there and we had a certain time slot. Come to find out later, we could have spent more time, but you know, we didn't know, so. <laughs> but in 15 minutes, I was able to pick up a frame, a pitcher, an enamelware utensil holder with utensils, a tiny little uh, fan. What else did I buy? I don't know because there's nowhere to park. So I dropped everybody off and was like driving around just waiting for them to get done. I drove up and down the street a couple times, roundabouts here and there, you know, and then I went back and picked all the goodies up. You're the best little driver. I can say that we didn't find any more enamel wear pictures anywhere else. And had I not purchased them when I found them, then I would have totally missed out on purchasing French enamel wear, which was on the top of my shopping list. And I still bought them at a price that I can make a profit. So I call that a win. Yeah, we looked them up on eBay and even at the price point after buying an extra suitcase and shipping them here, it still would have been worth it. Absolutely. So number one rule, when you see something you like, if you can make money on it, you better buy it because you don't know what you're going to find again. Well, and after looking at her pile, she walked in this morning. She's like, I don't know what I can part with. I don't know what I'm going to be able to sell. So, you know, we'll figure that out as we go along. But we had at that point, we'd had a little bit of taste, like a little bit of taste of the good deals. And we were getting antsy and excited. But it was time for Monet's Garden, which was absolutely beautiful, inspiring, wonderful. We wound up finding a shop there and buying a few things from there, a yeah. couple aprons and such. And we also just really, we enjoyed going to Monet's Grave and we found these awesome like grave floral ceramic, I don't even know what you call them. We'll just call them ceramic flowers. Yeah. Because that's were, what they are. <laughs> they were beautiful. But we wanted to get to another flea market, wasn't time. So we had a bunch of other stuff we had to do, which we're gonna share later. But the very last day, the last day, the last day, we went here, Plan du Marche. I don't know <laughs> what the fancy E does, but that's where we went. It was amazing. So Zeb is going to share with you a ton of pictures and video of the Plan du Marche. It's in Paris. My, I was told by everybody, you won't be able to purchase anything, but it's definitely worth going. But I had hope. Yeah, we, I had hoped that I would find some stuff to purchase and we found the mother load. It started a little slow, prices were a little bit expensive, items were beautiful. The very first thing I purchased actually wound up helping me find something else. I had a bucket, it's a paint bucket, I paid 45 euro for it. <laughs> Why are gonna, you laughing? We're gonna use it as a display or something, like that paint bucket better get into a lot of pictures. I'll grab the paint bucket. I even have the business card. Uh, the person. Not very many people do uh, social media over there, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So 
when she said that she had social media accounts, we were like, ooh, we'll tag you. She also had beautiful lighting on the other side that was a joint venture for their shop. And then I purchased this bucket for 45 euros. I know, you're like, what the heck, Jamie? That's a mint bucket, but it's a paint bucket and it's rusted and the color is amazing. I had to have it and I'm keeping it for myself as a souvenir. And you know what? A lot of people waste money on dumb souvenirs when they travel, you know, like, well, I won't mention them because maybe you collect one of those souvenirs. But this is something that's actually cool, usable, and I'm gonna put my paintbrushes in it so it's not for sale. At 45 euro, I'm not gonna make a profit, but this actually helped me get something else. So second on my list was a bunch of copper pots and I passed by a shop. We actually have it on the map. Hold on, I'll show you. Booth 98. And if you look it up, 98 is uh, Azures, France. We went to the shop, this guy was smoking a big old cigar. <laughs> Smelled, I, if you like cigars, right on, but it stunk. But he was smoking a big old cigar, but he was super friendly and there was a set of copper pots in the window and I asked oh. how much it was. They were, well, I saw the copper pots. I'm like, Jamie, here's your copper pots. Cause she'd been looking for copper, kind of like enamelware the whole time and we hadn't found it. And he had some really nice shiny pots in the window outside his Heavy shop. Heavy duty. Like they were shined up, polished, almost looked brand new, but you could tell they were old just from the style. And so she goes, I'm like, I bet those are 1100 euro. And she goes in and asks, how much were they? 750 euro. And I'd already spent 45 euro on this. So I left and I was holding this pot, just kind of like a purse, I don't know, I just had it in my hand. And I walked past and then our group kind of got separated. So then I found them and I walked past the shop again and I didn't see this go on, but I think, Maybe Dion said that she saw it. I can't remember. My brain is fluffy, jet lag. But Dion said she saw the lady that was in the booth see my rusty old tin and say, talk to the guy like, oh, you know what? I bet we have something that she might like. She doesn't want things brand new. We don't know what she actually said because we don't speak French, but that's what it looked like. And he says, Madame, Madame, come back in, come back in. He's like, I have a set of, I have a set of pots, 110 euro. And I'm like, Show me the discount pots. <laughs> so he like, he gets down underneath the table, pulls out the Tupperware and he's pulling these pots out. Hold on, I'll show you. So he digs out these copper pots. He proceeds to tell me with a little bit of elbow grease, I can shine them up. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I'm trying not to look excited because I don't want him to gouge me, but I love the patina. Some don't have as much patina as others. And I know that if we shine them up, they could be even more beautiful but they're older pots. I'm not sure the age on them, but they're definitely not a new set. And they have been well loved. So for 110 euro, I didn't even count them. I got so one, two, three, three, four, four, five, six, seven pots. And they're heavy duty with like these big cast iron handles. Yeah, they're very well made. They're not as heavy as the other copper pots that I saw in the window, which is actually good because we had to have under 50 pounds in our suitcase. Careful, you're gonna get some of that. Which rusty. we barely made. We barely made that. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about suitcases, people. We had two big suitcases and two carry ons. Zeb wound up buying one more big suitcase and a bunch of rolling pins from a French, we'll call it French family dollar. That's yeah. where we went. That's the discount. Was. The discount smart. smart. <laughs> and we were able to get all of these items home in that. But look at the beauty. I love those copper pots. Anyways, so the moral of the story is had yeah. I not been holding this pot, they wouldn't have seen that I wouldn't mind a little bit of crustiness and they wouldn't have sold me these pots, which I'm absolutely in love with. None of them are for sale. They are all going, all going to be displayed on my shelves in my farmhouse when you get it finished. Yes, when I get that finished. So we continued to shop around the Plan de Marche, right? That's what it's called. We'll say that, yeah. We didn't wind up buying anything else except for Zeb found a little key. I did get a key. Yeah. So I, uh, I love keys, especially these old ones. And this one is particularly got like a cool shape to it. I found it in this booth. He had a ton of stuff. I'm like, hey, I just want this little key. How much? He told me 10 euro. I'm like, oh, okay. So I set it down. He's like eight euro. I'm like, I'm a buyer of five. And he spoke pretty good English and he's like, no, I can't do five. And I started to walk out again. He's like, okay, okay, five. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that was the first time that we had really negotiated because I didn't negotiate all those pots. I was like 110 euro, I'll take it. 
but I didn't want the key bad enough to pay 10 euro on it. And then later we found a place that was selling keys for like two euro, but they were smaller. Yeah, they weren't as big. And I think you want to keep that key, don't you? Yep, I'm keeping this. It's going to be, I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe a paperweight, but it's just cool and I love it. It's a back scratcher. You could, it's big. Okay, so at this point we found some good stuff, but we're still like, we want the deals. So we met up with Sarah and Kathy from the White Swan and the Tarnished Pearl because they, they found some deals. So parking is always a big deal. So we were in separate vans and where I found a parking garage, we went down, we paid for our parking and then everybody got out and we were like in these shops, which were actual shops, not necessarily booths with tents and things. And then Kathy and Sarah were off thrifting. They'd gotten dropped off and they were basically out on the street. There's just tables out on the street, like a yard sale. And they were going through all of that stuff. And we found them finally after about a half hour of searching. And that's where the honey hole was. So they were across the street and then down a ways. And what I, like might, a mile away. I might refer to as the um, sketchy neighborhood. Mm, yeah. You, yeah. Mean, you definitely didn't want to walk around there at night alone. Yeah, no, it probably wasn't the safest place we've ever visited. However, the deals were good. And that's when we started really going. And when people would offer us a price on something, we cut the price in half. And I would say 90% of the time they would take half of whatever they offered because that's the dance. Yeah. Well, and obviously they knew we were American. And, you know, as soon as they see you're American, the price is double. Yeah. So we cut them in half a lot of the prices and we would bundle deals and we made, we bought a lot of really awesome finds from them. I purchased a few more items of copper, some beautiful candlesticks that I plan on keeping and just a bunch of various items that we were able to really, and it was like a high, like I don't even know how to explain it. Like you go to like, okay, so we do a little bit of shopping when we were there and I got the enamel wear and that was pretty good. I was excited about that. And then we finally found the grain year and I was excited about that because I got some really great deals, but that was just a few minutes and I kept getting these little tastes of shopping. And then I did find the good deals, the copper pots, I was like through the roof. And then I find- Yeah, we oh, could have gone home at the copper pots. Yeah, I could have gone home and been happy, but this was like the icing on the 12 layer cake. Like it was so good. And we really hauled through there. We didn't spend a lot of money. We were down to a limited amount of euros. I think we by had this like point- We like 30 right, euros left and you borrowed some from Sarah? Yeah, I think for 45 euros, we finished our uh, thrifting and we really just raked it in and got a lot of really awesome finds for not a lot of money. It might've been a little bit dangerous, but you know, that's how junking it is. It was all right. I it never, I never felt danger. They were good people. The best part is when Debbie wanted to buy these little tiny Paris uh, Eiffel, Towers. Eiffel Towers and this guy was like, I have more, follow me. And we're following Debbie and Kathy as they're running through following this guy into like around the corner in kind of like an alley where he has like a storage unit. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is where we die. I have a picture. I'm going to share that with you. That's where they found all their Eiffel Towers. It looks totally legit, right? Yes where I would keep all my treasures. So number one question we kept getting asked as we shared pictures on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube is how are you getting that home? And we had a couple of ways. A, we packed very light going there. I fit all of my clothing for the whole week in a carry-on and Jamie used up half of a big suitcase and her carry-on was empty. And so we had a big empty suitcase that we brought and an empty suitcase because we were allowed to check one bag, have a carry-on and a personal item. So we got to France with basically one and a half empty suitcases and then we purchased another one. That suitcase was 50 bucks. It was about the same size, a big one. It was $80 or 80 euro, was it? It, it was 85 euro to get that yeah. extra suitcase home. And we could have brought an, another empty suitcase, but you really don't want to haul all these suitcases. Yeah, we didn't want to fly an empty suitcase over there and we would have had to buy a here anyway. So we bought it over there and then we packed that in all around like our dirty clothes and stuff. And We use dirty clothes to roll up items. Let's be honest. That's yeah. how that happened. There, there were shirts and pants and socks all over the place up in all of our antiques business. But that was the only way to get a home. We had one picture that didn't fit. So I took that sucker, put it on my back in my backpack and I hauled it on the airplane all around the airport 
in my backpack because guess what? When you have good junk, you figure we could not have bought one more thing. No, we were like, maxed we had out. Every inch, or every suitcase was like within a kilogram of being too heavy. We put all of our breakables in a carry-on, and then we had anything that was super heavy, like I had that pewter pitcher was heavy. Oh, that was in a carry-on. Pewter pitcher is way heavy. Yeah, I knew that would tip me over. And then everything else we packed accordingly. We had to get a little creative. It worked out though, we made it work. And we got it all home with minimal breakage, only the frame broke. A couple of the enamelware pots were a little oval and set around, but that's already fixed. We already just, you know, popped those out. So here's our, here's our tips if we were gonna do it again. Okay. Here's our tips. Tips. Number one, use your phone to search Grainiers and flea markets. Find out the times they start and where they're located and then plan your plan of attack. Second, be sure you're ready to negotiate. That is something that they absolutely will do and they are expecting it. The price they give you is not the price they expect to end up with. They give you the price that they want to negotiate with. So practice on somebody, do some role playing before you go. Don't be afraid to walk away, like set it down and walk out. And maybe you come back by and they've thought about it 10, 15 minutes and they're like, all right, you know, I can take it for that. All right, there's those tips. Also, make sure you have euros on you in small bills. We have noticed, especially when we went to the sketch flea market. They wanted coins. They wanted coins. Well, and they didn't want to make change. And I think some of it was they had a hard time calculating it. When I bought the copper candlesticks, he had a really hard time figuring out what the change was. So have small bills. So when you offer a, like an amount, you can basically give them that amount and they don't have to make you change. Make sure you stay hydrated. Oh. If you see a bathroom and it looks even remotely decent, use it even if you don't have to go because you never know your next potty stop is gonna be. Well, a lot of places, especially in Paris, we had to pay to use the restroom. We had to buy something or purchase a meal or something to use the restroom. Make sure you have a vehicle that can get these items home and pack light, leave extra room, and constantly while you're out shopping every night, pack your stuff in and see exactly how much space you have left so you mentally know what you can and cannot fit. One of the last places we went to right before we head out of town was an art supply store. Yeah. We picked up some French medicine bottles. They're beautiful. We're gonna wind up selling them at the shop. So never underestimate the power of just purchasing French items, whether even if they're brand new, if you think they're beautiful and something you can't get here in the States. So this was one of the reasons we went to France was to buy some fun things to bring home, but we also went to look at the architecture and the design and the old chippy doors and the shutters and all of those things. And we've got a lot of inspiration on some things we want to do in our farmhouse and incorporate into our shop. Comment below with your favorite flea market find that we showed you in this video. Also with what you'd like to see us recreate with paint finishes or techniques we learned in France. Share this video with your friends who love DIY. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.